You may be wondering why there is all this focus on vectors and why I said that vectors were king in R. That's because R has as its basic paradigm a thing called vectorized computing. Vectorized computing isn't an automatic thing in languages like Python. However, there are Python packages like pandas that implement vectorized computing. But vectorized computing is a very basic part of R itself. What vectorized computing means is that whenever you perform some kind of operation, it might be a math operation, or you could be putting the vector into a function. Whatever that operation is, it's performed on all of the items in the vector at once. You don't have to iterate through the items in the vector and say, okay, do it to the first item, then do it to the second item, then do it to the third item. If you say, perform this action on the vector, it just automatically gets done on all items in the vector. So uh, this manifests itself in two ways. One is if you're performing an operation on a single vector, it performs it on all items in that single vector, like I just said. But also, if you perform an operation on two vectors, then that operation is carried out sequentially pairwise on each of the uh, corresponding items within the two vectors. And when you do these sort of pairwise operations, the result is usually going to be a vector that has the same length as the vectors you're performing the operation on. We saw that we could perform a fun uh, we could put a number into a function like square root. So if we assign the number two to a variable called number and then put that in as an argument of a function, then it'll tell us what the square root of two is. But this kind of a function, the square root function, works equally well if the thing that we pass into the function is not just a single number, but actually a vector of numbers. So here I'm creating a vector of numbers. I pass it in. It's going to give me a result that is all of the numbers squared. First of all, in the console window, I'm going to go ahead and type number vector. And just to remind ourselves what is in number vector. If I go ahead and perform the square root function on the number vector, then I see that it's provided me with the square root of all five of those numbers here. If I multiply number vector by three, then it's taken all five of these numbers and multiplied them by three. So if I put in, if the thing that I put into the function or do the operation on is a vector with five items, then the answer that I get is also going to be a vector with five items. To illustrate what's going on here, when we take an, a vector like number vector and multiply it by three, we started off with these numbers originally, which we can rec uh, represent like this, a place with five slots. Each one of the items in that vector has the operation multiply by three performed onto it, and so I get also a sequence of answers that correspond one to one with each of the items in the original vector. So if my original vector has five slots, the resulting vector is also going to have a length of five. And the five things will be basically the five answers to my multiplication. If I want to perform an operation on two vectors, so for example, here I create a vector with the numbers 10, 30, and 100, and the second vector with the numbers 5, 10, and 20. If I divide the first vector by the second vector, then the result is also going to be a vector because it's going to do pairwise division on each one. And here we can see this represented diagrammatically. So here's the first vector, and here's the second vector. So the first item of the first vector is divided by the first item of the second vector, and the answer is the first item in the answer vector. 
then we perform the operation on the second item in the two vectors and we create the second item in the answer vector and so on with the third item in the two vectors. So if the vectors that we are performing the operation on each have three items, then the answer will also have three items. One of the questions then is what happens if the length of the vectors are not the same? and R has rules for dealing with this. Um, it will essentially repeat uh, one of the, the, it will repeat the items in the shorter vector until it's repeated it enough times to match up with the longer vector. But basically, if you're doing this kind of operation, it's best to try to ensure that the vectors you're performing the operation on actually have the same number of items. Otherwise, you end up getting perhaps getting some kind of unanticipated results that surprise you. So let's let's go ahead and do this two vector operation. But before we do that, um, these windows are getting really busy here and it's kind of hard to see what's going on. Since all of this is really basically temporary stuff, I can clear out my global environment by using this little broom icon here. And so not only does it clear off what I see in the screen, it actually removes those objects from the environment. So as you saw earlier, it remembered what the values were in something like number vector because that was stored in the environment. I'm essentially clearing out the environment. So if I ask what number vector is now, it's not going to know. Also, you see down here the terminal, um, window is very busy, I can use the little broom thing here to clean out the terminal window as well. So let's go back up here and assign. Uh, so here I assigned these three numbers to vector A and I see vector A has popped up in my environment. Now let's put the numbers into vector B. It's popped up in the environment. Now let's go ahead and do the division. So vector C, which is the answer, also has three items and you can see each one of the answer items is the division of a pair of corresponding items in the two vectors that I were, was performing the division on. And then of course, if I just ask what C is, I can have it report the answer down here in the console window for me as well.